Uh, we can go to the next slide right away, please. So the title of our project is Development and Pilot Testing of an Innovative Demand-Led Training Model to Support Entry and Retention in the Aquaculture Sector. This project has been complete for, for uh, a little bit over a year now. And uh, it, it was, of course, conducted with the support of NLWIC. Thank you very much for that. And in partnership with the College of the North Atlantic and the Marine Institute, who are both service delivery partners. And the location of the training was the coast of Bays region uh, in Newfoundland, targeting uh, various populations in Newfoundland who were displaced or distanced from the labor market. So we can go to the next slide, please. And our research questions, I basically simplified it to two main questions. One, the first one is an implementation question and proof of concept type question. Is it feasible to develop and implement a sector specific training model for the unemployed in aquaculture? Recruiting participants and learners, coordinating uh, scheduling and, and uh, training customization with employers and service delivery partners. Could we just pull this off basically is our first question. Our second one is, what are the outcomes? Uh, does the model lead to positive training and employment outcomes? So we could go to the next slide. And we need to do a couple more clicks, I think. There we go. So summarizing some of our methodological uh, pieces in this, the first piece is a pre-implementation phase where we did a document review uh, to identify some of the job performance needs in the aquaculture sector. And then we validated that review with employers in the aquaculture sector in Newfoundland by engaging them in focus groups and interviews uh, and, and were able to thus refine the job performance framework and the skills needed for workers entering the aquaculture sector, which has changed a lot in, in recent years. In the meantime, uh, learners were being recruited and training was being customized according to the findings from our needs analysis and employer engagement. And you can keep clicking through that slide. And then we had three main components of training. One was an essential skills training piece for five weeks to skill up on the skills that were identified by employers as being important. Then followed by a technical training piece in the Marine Institute, which included important certifications, followed by a work experience in the workplace with employers who were part of the partnership in this project, and followed by the analysis and reporting of the results. And we can keep clicking uh, to get the data pieces and there was a very rich data collection framework here, uh, of which I'll only be able to summarize a small sliver today. So we can go to the next slide. So the first thing we found was that uh, from our employer engagement piece that the industry has modernized a lot recently, both in terms of technology and increasing use of digital technology, especially, and in terms of the diversity and composition of the workforce. So that basically led to a couple of key skill areas that employers identified and verified as being important. One is the digital skills piece, being able to do things digitally that people used to do manually in the sector. And then the soft skills and, and need for continuous learning uh, as, as things keep getting upgraded and the need to communicate and collaborate effectively with diverse workforces within the sector were key as well. Next slide, please. So the first question was implementation uh, possible and feasible? Yes, indeed, it was a great success. We were able to recruit 16 individuals to participate, all men, no women. And we were hoping to get a little bit more diverse of, uh, of a recruiting uh, drive, uh, but we got four indigenous uh, people as well who, who registered to participate in this. Uh, there was high engagement and interest from the employers, which was great. And they participated participated with us in the needs analysis. There was a lot of student engagement and people were very satisfied with the training program, despite the fact that it took quite a while to get through it. And in general, the service delivery partners were very happy with the way delivery went and thought it was a good model to scale up for the sector. And next slide, please. In terms of the outcomes, I'm summarizing quite a bit here. There's quite a bit more rich data here, but just to summarize quickly, we were able to, even though it's a small project, divide our, our uh, unemployed uh, folks into two groups, uh, which were quite different. One of which we call displaced workers uh, who are all in their 30s and 40s, mainly married, uh, a high proportion of post-secondary education, very connected to labor market. Uh, most of them had worked at least two of the past three years and had a deep experience uh, in, in the sectors they worked in, especially construction with 10 plus years experience. They were all receiving EI. On the other hand, we had the disconnected, what we call the disconnected group, who had a wider age range. We had a lot more young people and older people in this group, uh, mainly single. Very few had com completed post-secondary. They had very little attachment to labor market. Zero percent had worked at least two of the past three years. 
Some of them had experience with aquaculture, but very short duration experience. 40% were actually receiving income assistance. Um, so a very different, different uh, subgroup. Both groups, we are happy to report, got gains in essential and soft skills, but there was a mix in the way that those gains translated into performance in the later stages of training. So the displaced group who were more attached to labor market were able to transition to high performance in technical training and also high performance as rated by the employers uh, in the work experience piece of the training. Whereas the disconnected group with less labor market, less recent labor market experience had a mixed transition piece in terms of transitioning their gains in essential and soft skills to performance and technical training and the work experience. And these differences led to differences in the hiring and employment outcomes, where most of the displaced group were hired after the work experiences by the employer. The one who wasn't hired actually left for a different job, so, so was able to find other work. In the disconnected group, uh, only four out of the 10 were hired after the work experience. Uh, one left for another job, so five out of 10 actually got employed. Three completed the training but were not hired, and two dropped out without completing the training. So again, a, a mix of experiences uh, in the two groups. And we can go to the next slide. I realize I have about two minutes left. So recommendations and opportunities. Uh, we really the multi-component training model to bridge participants into work at different distances from labor market, where you emphasize transferable skills first to boost their chances of success in the technical training and certification piece and the transition to work experience. And these components blend into each other in a way that works really well. Um, training informed by employer engagement is really important, uh, both in terms of hiring schedules and hiring cycles, but also in terms of the, the, the skills the employers need, especially as industries are changing very quickly. So it helps us identify the priorities for skills development, and it helps us customize the training delivery model to what employers are actually looking for. Tailoring training to participant needs is also important as well. Uh, as we see, we have two very different subgroups. Some of them probably needed less in terms of essential skills training. Others probably needed more in terms of more supports and customized job coaching to help facilitate that, that tr difficult transition into technical training. Measuring what matters was also important to have our measures and data collection aligned with our training goals and content and the job performance requirements really helped to understand the outcomes. And finally, if we want to scale this up, we might want to consider something like a centralized online portal to facilitate recruitment and some remote learning opportunities rather than asking people to travel long distances for long periods of time with employers connected as part of that portal as well. And we've had experience from other projects building better branding with social media campaigns tied to these kind of centralized portals that can then be used to target high priority populations. So once again, thank you so much to Anna Wick for funding this, and we're really happy to be part of this conference.